Ooh, man. <laughs> Every time I get this thing out, you know, it's it's like I forget how heavy it is. That thing is, uh, this is the AEA side cocking right here. Big Bore 357 PCP, pre-charged pneumatic air rifle. Okay. First thing I'm going to do for the safety Nazis is clear. Push this little button right here. Pull this all the way back. <clears throat> you can then see the chamber is clear. The magazine is here, but it is not inserted. And uh, that's it. So now to decock it, um, you have to pull the trigger, pull the trigger, and pull the lever at the same time. So let's, let me get this here. Arr. Reverse it. There we go. Slowly let it go forward. There. All right. For those of you that have not seen this, I uh, did a little informal shooting with it. Um, and the video is over on News Now Community. Um, tonight, I'm going to do something just a little bit different. First, I'm going to show you the rifle because I haven't put anything on this channel about it yet. All right. Side cocking is here. There's a little button you push that releases the cocking lever. You pull it all the way back and you're cocked. It has a 10 round rotary magazine made of aluminum. Very good quality. I've not had any issues with it. Um, it, it it's a solid, solid rifle. However, it ain't light. The as shipped empty weight is uh, 10 pounds. Add a scope and some rings, you're up around 11 pounds. It is not light. Okay. I've added the bipod and the scope. It does not come with those. There is a manometer. If you can see there on the, hold on, get this right here. There's the manometer. It is baffled to help reduce the report because it is uh, a little on the loud side. Um, if, you, if you look at the video of me shooting over on News Now Community the other day, and I'll put a link to that video in this description, this thing is, is popping 90 grain pellets or slugs. It'll handle either pellets or slugs, and the magazine is actually very large. You can get some good the slugs in this thing up to 175 grains will fit in here. But it is pushing those 90 grain uh, pellets or slugs out at over 1,300 feet per second. Now think about that for a second. This is a 35 caliber. Basically, 357 is what it's marked. 35 caliber, 90 grains. Actually, it's not, I think those are 93 grains, but whatever. We'll call it 90 for the sake of argument here. 90 grains at over 1300 feet per second it was 1320 1330 ish okay and you'll get a full magazine out of it with those kind of velocities are real close to it now i have not changed the tune on this from the factory you'll get two and a half or so mags before you need to recharge at full power before you need to recharge um it, it, it's a it's a nice nice rifle. The quality of the build is very good. The woodwork quality is nice. Um, here you have the trigger, of course. This is the safety. You pull it backwards for safe, forward for for uh, unsafe <laughs> or fire. Um, man, it's it's a solid thing, but just the weight. This is going to be something that you need. You need a bipod. Or you need to be in a blind with. You're not going to go hiking through the woods carrying this thing unless you're Arnold Schwarzenegger. This thing is, like I said, it's huge. And it's the bullpup design. You're not going to get rounds off very quickly, okay? Because between each shot, you have to run this. And this has a pretty heavy spring in it. So you're going to have to unshoulder it to cock it. Now, they have what's called a power kit for this. And basically, it's some washers that go in here. 
that will boost your velocities. I haven't added that. Like I said, this one is completely bone stock. I got this on sale at Christmas or right after Christmas for uh, just under $600. I spent another $100 for a scope and a mount and uh, 20 something for this bipod. You have your choice when I bought this of either um, a spare magazine or this clamp that goes on the pressure tube for the mount for the uh, uh, bipod or flashlight whatever it is you're going to put under here. I opted for that rather than the spare magazine. This is made by AEA and it is sold here in the United States and uh, it's got a pick rail on the top. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's a solid solid built uh, PCP rear rifle. Um, AEA has a pretty good reputation and uh, I'm finding their products to be top notch. The scope I have on here is a Monstrum uh, variable zoom and I selected this not because it was a budget scope but because I have no experience with it and I wanted to try it and see you know how the quality was. I really liked the little arm that they put on there for your variable zoom okay it also has a range finding um, I don't know what they call that um, but it, it's uh, you have the ability to tune your focus for range it also came with the scope covers as well now I'll get some videos up um, as soon as the weather gets a little better in the meantime <clears throat> I find this finish to be a little reflective not so much on a scope but I'm gonna wrap the entire rifle with this this is some pretty amazing tape okay it's not sticky it only sticks to itself it won't stick to the scope it only sticks to itself so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap the scope <clears throat> And um, that's all you'll see tonight. I'll do the rifle off camera. I don't think you guys want to sit around and watch me wrapping this stuff. So what do you need to use this? You need a pair of scissors. Okay. The tape. I got 12 of these on Amazon for... And by the way, I make no money off of this Amazon. I'm not an Amazon partner. I'm not Amazon linked or anything like that. But I got 12 of these for like $11. How good are they? We're going to find out. This is their regular camo version, woodland camo. They have a lot of different patterns. Uh, this was just what I selected. I thought it would be adequate. So we are going to give it a shot. Um, I watched a few videos about this, but I have not actually done this. So this is new to me as it is to you. I'm going to stretch that just a little bit. Come across. All right. Okay, so we go around one time to lock it in place. And you're supposed to stretch it a little bit as you go. All right. And we're going to come around here and go again. We'll see what the results are of this. And I'm sure you guys, some of you guys out there, hunters and whatnot, have used these this product before or something similar to it. So... Tell me in the comments what you think about it. Um, I like that it's a little sticky to the hand when you're not, there's no glue on it, okay? But for handling, like touching, it's uh, it's pretty grippy, and I like that. It's uh, washable. You can remove it and wash it if it gets dirty. I'm going to keep pushing this up because it's going to pull down on me, of course. Um, okay, so that's almost to length. So let's, I'm going to cut this here about right there. And I think that will do, be the end of the front here where we want to be. All right. Not bad. Hmm. Okay. Pretty simple. 
I, like I said, I like that you can remove it, wash it if you don't like, or you want to change colors, different patterns for different areas that you hunt. You can do that. Uh, it's pretty neat. Now, I'm not a hunter. I'm not into killing Bambi. I would love to go hog hunting. This is capable of taking most game in North America. Okay. They also make a 45 and a 50 caliber version of this. Now, this thing in 357 with lighter bullets. Um, okay, so I'm going to explain this like I explained it the other day when I was shooting this on the other channel. Horsepower doesn't make your car go. Torque makes your car go. People are hooked on horsepower just because it's a, I don't know if it's a sales thing or what, but people are always worried about horsepower. Forget the horsepower, think about the torque. With When it comes to firearms, velocity isn't the most important thing. Velocity is secondary to foot pounds of energy. The energy that that, that, that round puts on the target when it strikes it. That's what's important. That's what puts a target down. This air rifle puts out around 200 or more, but we're going to, on the low end, 200 foot-pounds of energy with the uh, lighter bullets. When you use heavier heavier bullets that uh, are heavier pellets, even those, those numbers change, all right? <clears throat> The 50 caliber version of this puts something on the order of 500 foot pounds of energy on target. That is insane. Um, I chose the 357 simply because of the the price of shooting this versus the price of shooting the 500, the 50 cal. You can they have 35 caliber pellets that you can shoot in this that are relatively inexpensive. They do not have pellets for the 50 cal. All they have are slugs. Okay, And I've got quite a selection of slugs to put through this as well as some other pellets. And we're going to be doing that as soon as the weather improves and I can get out to the range to, to do it. Alright, so while I'm talking, I guess I could be wrapping as well. Now back here, I'm just going to go around this part here and leave it at that. This stuff is pretty easy to use. I mean, it, and it's not tape in the traditional sense. So there's not going to be a bunch of sticky mess to clean up later. I might should have cut that just a little bit longer. Let's see if I'm right. Nah, it'll go on there. Yeah, again, if you guys have used this stuff before, leave me a comment and uh, tell me what, what your results were. What your how it worked out for you but uh, I, I'm liking the look overall I'm not gonna be able to do that I cut a piece right here maybe a small piece here split them and that will that'll do the scope I think um, later on I'll wrap like the barrel I might even do that real quick tonight um, so like I said those thus far I've only had a couple of times to get out with this thing to uh, to shoot uh, and again, I'm not, I'm not using it for hunting. I'm using it for uh, just basically target shooting, and uh, and that's about it. But look at that. That doesn't look too bad, even on a webcam. <laughs> I had intended to do this as a live stream tonight, but uh, not approved for live streaming on YouTube just yet. Um, should be by the next couple of days. So I wasn't aware, you know, being that tech guru, tech uh, YouTube guru that I am, I wasn't aware that uh, you had to ask YouTube for permission to live stream. When I first started doing this, you, could, you couldn't go live. And then when YouTube made that a feature... You know, it was a, that feature was available to pretty much everybody. And, uh, and then they changed it, and you had to have so many people. And it, it's YouTube is such a pain sometimes. But, you know, it's my platform of choice, so I just have to 
work around it. I, nothing. Till they come up with something better, you know, or something different. I'm, I'm just kind of stuck. Um, hold on. I split that, that piece there in half so that I could use it over here. Ah, Got to push it through to get around that scope cover. I mean, that's uh, the scope rail. Oops. See? All right. So I'm seeing one pain, and that is that it wraps up on itself. I mean, it's, it's not Velcro. It's, uh, man, I don't know what to call it or how it, how it really works. Okay, this is going to have a few wrinkles in it, but I don't think that matters. That just kind of enhances the, the uh, camo pattern. There, okay. Not bad. And I'm not a professional. I just play one on YouTube. <laughs> there. All right. I still need to do like down here, but that'll be easy. I'll just do one piece that comes across here. And well, let's see. Maybe I'll do it real quick. Um, actually, I wonder if this one would, if I could do this lengthwise. Hold on. I got an idea. That's dangerous, right? No, it doesn't stretch. Okay, so it does not stretch this way. It only stretches this way. So that's not going to work. I'm going to have to wrap this this part of the barrel. And again, I like this because, well, first off, it's pretty inexpensive compared to a and a wrap. Uh, what do they call those um, vinyl wraps? This is way less expensive. Um, and for, for what it costs, honestly, if you... If you did it and didn't like it, you're not out much. And uh, because it's reusable, you could just stick it away in the closet and come back later and reuse it. And when you found something that maybe needed uh, a little enhancement because it was aged, um, or like the wood stock, if you wanted to protect the, uh, the wooden stock, on your rifle, you could wrap it with this stuff, and it's not going to it's not going to be the best protection you can get, but it's going to be it's going to be some protection. I mean, better than better than nothing. You know, if it prevents one gouge or major scratch, that would be that would be something. Um. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this rifle long term because I'm not a hunter. Although I'd love to go hog hunting and this would be capable of taking a hog. Um, I'm not, I don't believe in hunting for sport. You know, you hunt for food, that's fine. Um, but again, I'm just not a hunter. It's just not my thing. I'm not against it. There. Man, that looks pretty good. I like the way that looks. I cut a little piece and put in there. Wrap this rail. Maybe wrap this rail where I'm, what I'm not using on this rail. It should look good. The uh, I'll take the action out of the stock. Wrap the stock and then put the action back in. And maybe wrap just a portion of the, the action. Up here is easy because there's no band between the barrel and the air tube. So, I don't know. So, again, this is that uh, AEA... Big bore in 357. You can see right there under the AEA it says 357. They make another version, a smaller, lighter version of this that is uh, lever action, not lever action, bolt action. This is the side cocking version. And I don't know what else to tell you about this. Like I said, I will get out as soon as the weather improves. We'll get uh, we'll get some shooting videos, some uh, chron chronograph numbers, and uh, go from there. So hope you found this informative, and uh, I appreciate you guys taking a minute to, to watch. Y'all be safe, and I'll see you again soon.